Hey, welcome to the Magnaflux channel. Visible penetrant inspection or dye penetrant inspection is a non-destructive testing method used to locate surface breaking discontinuities. Typically three products are used, penetrant, cleaner, and developer. Since we're locating surface breaking discontinuities, it is very important to remove any paint or coatings from the surface of the part before beginning the inspection. It's also important to clean the test surface to remove residual grease, oil, or dirt. The test surface can be cleaned using solvent cleaner, or in some cases, it may be more convenient to use an aqueous cleaner. We're using SKCS cleaner remover to confirm that the surface is free of residuals. Also with the pre-cleaning step, it's important to allow time for any cleaner to evaporate or to dry from the surface. Not only can grease, oil, and dirt interfere with the penetrant doing its job, but water can also block entry of the penetrant into any discontinuities. So pre-cleaning, think cleaning, but also think drying the part. Once we have a clean, dry part, we can apply the penetrant. Penetrant can be applied to the entire surface, or it can be applied only to the area that we're interested in. In this part, we're inspecting a weld, so we can just apply the penetrant to the welded area. We don't need to cover the whole surface in this case. The goal is to get full penetrant coverage on the area of interest. The penetrant can be applied by dipping, by spraying, by brushing on, by flowing on, and on small surfaces it can be applied using a pipette or even using a Q-tip. Once the penetrant covers the inspection area, most specifications require a minimum of 10 minute dwell time. The dwell time is when the penetrant's doing its work, it's getting into the surface breaking discontinuities. After our 10 minute penetrant dwell time, we're ready for the penetrant removal step. We only want to remove the excess surface penetrant. Of course, we want to leave penetrant that's in any discontinuities. So this is a more cautious removal step compared to the pre-cleaning step. We're gonna start with a dry towel and wipe to remove excess surface penetrant. We're gonna follow that up with a slightly moistened towel using the SKCS cleaner. Again, being somewhat cautious to not over remove. Very important to never directly spray or apply the solvent cleaner onto the part during this step. You could potentially remove penetrant that's in discontinuities. We do want to give one or two minutes of evaporation time dry time to allow the SKCS cleaner to evaporate and then we'll apply our developer. In the meantime, we can shape the aerosol can, which is a requirement. The developer particles will tend to settle in the bottom of the can, so shape the can until you hear the rattle. Want to be about 10 inches or 25 centimeters from the surface of the part when applying the developer and apply a thin coating, a thin uniform coating. Most specifications also require a 10 minute development time. 
So it's been 10 minutes and we have an indication that's visible on the weld. So what do we do now? That all depends on the acceptance criteria on your company's material part specification. This part may be accepted as is, it may be rejected, it may be reworked. Keep in mind that reworked parts would cycle back through the system and be penetrant tested again. In most cases, there will be a post-cleaning step, and that's to remove the residual penetrant and developer before the part moves on to its next manufacturing step, or in some cases, before it's packaged and shipped to the customer. The post-cleaning is very similar to the pre-cleaning step. A solvent cleaner can be used, an aqueous cleaner can be used um, to simply remove the residual penetrant and developer.